an NBC News exclusive, Deborah LaFave, Crossing the Line. Good evening, everyone. I'm Matt Lauer. So a new school year begins and your teenager comes home talking about how much he likes one of his teachers. Your first thought might be good. I hope he learns something. But the parents of one 14-year-old in Florida were not happy about what their son was learning from a teacher in his school. Her name was Deborah LaFave, and she's one in a string of young female teachers who've admitted having sex with underage male students. Tonight, in an exclusive interview, Deborah LaFave tells her side of the story, what she learned in school about herself. What's the reaction you get in the street from people who recognize you? Snickers, stares, um, mothers would hold their children tightly when they saw me. Obviously, do it in front of Obviously. you. Obviously. And that say bad things to you? Um, that's Deborah LaFave. She's a top contender for the title of America's most notorious school teacher. In 2004, Deborah Beasley LaFave was arrested at the home of a middle school student, accused of having sex with him at her apartment, in her car, in her classroom. She was 23. He was 14. Now to a shocking story. A Florida teacher is facing possible prison time. She wasn't the first teacher, or the last, to be busted for a liaison with an underage student. But her case created an international sensation. It was just the intensity of it. My goodness. You know, it, there was a teacher arrested two days after me, and I saw her on TV once. So why do you think you got all the attention? I don't know. I'll say it. Do you think it's because you're pretty? I think so. And sex sells. In her first ever television interview, Deborah LaFave will take us step by step through the whole affair. But she also says there's much more to the story. Behind the pretty face and the hourglass figure, behind the lurid details of the case, she says there was a deeply troubled young woman with a lifetime of problems that finally led to a terrible crack-up and a crime tailor-made for the tabloids. 14-year-old boy, a very attractive 23-year-old teacher. He's had sex with you. Weren't you scared to death he would tell someone? Obviously not, because I did it again. And again. And again. She says to fully understand her, you have to go back years to her childhood in a small town near Tampa, Florida. Her dad worked for the power company. Her mom was a cosmetologist. Deborah adored her older sister, Angie. I loved my big sister. Um, I couldn't go anywhere without her. I loved playing Barbies. I would play school with all my dolls and teach them how to read. But soon it became apparent that Debbie was a very complicated little girl. Her mother would later write a long account of Deborah's childhood, a litany of phobias, panic attacks, and obsessions. And Deborah says there was a trauma buried in her past. When you were 13 years old, 8th grade, you were raped mm -hmm. by someone you knew. Mm -hmm. Tell me about that. Um, the first time that it happened was in school. Um, he forced me into a bathroom and um, began to rape me. And a teacher walked in and she let us off the hook. Well, you say she let us off the hook. I mean, what did you do wrong? Why did she have to let you off the hook? Well, she had no clue that I was being raped. You know, she, I'm assuming, just thought we were messing around. Why didn't you say, this boy's raping me? It just doesn't happen like that. I had a lot of fear. Um, you know, when somebody has that kind of control over you, especially at 13, um, who was I didn't this, tell anybody. Who was this young man in your life? I mean, was he someone you were close with? Yeah, he was actually one of my boyfriends. Deborah says that early abusive relationship with an older boy forever shaped her view of sex. I kind of developed this idea that it was my role in order to make a man, guy, boy happy. Um, I had to do my part, which was pleasing him in that way. But you felt it was your duty. You didn't really mm -hmm. feel as if you had a choice. Exactly. By age 15, she was drinking heavily. She developed an eating disorder. So, I mean, as an outsider looking in, 
life was a bit of a mess. At that point, I had already um, tried to commit suicide twice, too. How did you try to commit suicide? Um, one time was taking a lot of pills, and this, the second time was slitting my wrists. But as troubled as she was, most people noticed something else. Deborah was a knockout. Were you one of these girls that people had walked up on, to on the street and say, you should model, you're, you're, you're very pretty, you should model, things like that? Yeah, I Option thought it would you. be a great way to make extra cash. Her first big job at age 18 was for a magazine called Makes and Models. Which you smile at now, which was basically they would have beautiful women and cars and right. motorcycles and things like that. How did you feel about it when you were doing it? So ridiculous. Did you ever think these pictures could come back and haunt me in some way? No. Never gave it a thought? Never. She wouldn't be a model for long. Deborah majored in English at the University of South Florida with the goal of becoming a teacher. She stopped her heavy drinking, got into a steady relationship, maintained a high B average, but she still found herself crying sometimes for no apparent reason. A friend finally told her she needed to see a psychiatrist. They thought that um, it was just depression and they put me on Zoloft at that time. How did that work for you? At first, I, I can remember saying, I'm not crying anymore. You know, I'm actually, I'm happy. And after that, it kind of just, it felt like my body became immune to it and it didn't work anymore. So the depression came back. Mm -hmm. Then perhaps the hardest blow of all. In 2001, Deborah's beloved older sister Angie was killed by a drunk driver. Deborah was devastated. And today she wonders, could her sister have saved her from herself? I think about if she was here, what I have done, what I did. Why would it have been different? Because she just, she knew me well, and she always could tell if I was doing something that I shouldn't be doing. In 2002, despite all her troubles, Deborah graduated from college and took a job as an eighth grade reading teacher at Greco Middle School in Temple Terrace, a suburb of Tampa. By all accounts, her first year went well. I always wanted to be a teacher. Like I said, I used to play school with my dolls. And after I got raped, I wanted to be able to educate kids on issues like rape and all the things that I never learned about. And You have to know it sounds ironic when you say I wanted to educate children on issues like rape. Oh, yeah. And but, how things turned out. Oh, yeah.